it's not something you see every day, you yeah. know? And I feel like technology nowadays, it's escalating rather rapidly. And for a woman to be part of that, make history, I think that's marvelous, you know? Seeing the people I grew up around, and all I see is them doing drugs and doing nothing, basically. And it's kind of sad because it's like, I don't want to turn up like you. They're always talking about, I'm getting money, but it's like, you're doing nothing with your life. And it's really sad. I'm in aviation, in the aviation field, because I felt like I needed to empower women. Okay. Especially since I'm one of my, like the first woman in my family to actually come into this field. So what helped you with that decision of getting two licenses? Why did you choose two? When you could have went to college, you could have had a whole nother plan. That's a good question, you know. <laughs> After having spent four years here, mm -hmm. I decided, and getting my first license, I decided to just go with it uh -huh. and get like the full package, both my licenses. Mm -hmm. My first one was my airframe in general, and my second one, which I just recently got, is the power plant. Okay. In this way, I'm able to work on the exterior and the interior of the airplane and mm -hmm. actually like, get to know a little more about the airplane, yeah. you know. Um, this also helps me when I do decide to start working for airlines to see that I, I'm, I have potential to know, mm -hmm. to be trained. You have experience, experience in a way. Yeah. yeah. Like I know the basics and then of course they help me, they train me specifically to mm -hmm. how they want their airplanes. Which to one be. was harder? I think yeah. the power plant was harder. Okay. Why? They're like, it's full of systems and like okay. the intake system, the exhaust system, mm -hmm. fire yeah. protection. So it has a bit more like the huge system and then knowing the the details and yeah. how this works why that works if this goes wrong mm -hmm. you need to do this so it's more of like tricky you know yeah. but doable <laughs> i feel you um, so why this field why did you choose this it's not something you see every day yeah. you know and i feel like technology nowadays it's escalating rather mm -hmm. rapidly mm -hmm. and for a woman to be part of that make history i think that's marvelous you know <laughs> and I like you don't hear a lot about women doing this thing mm -hmm. and now in college I'm doing majoring in English and minoring psychology at Why? Baruch it's something totally different uh -huh. I feel like it's a very good thing to be well-rounded you know mm -hmm. not only focus on the technical aspects of like the industry but something creative and to give back to our community yeah. you know so like, I feel like you have so much experience in all of these fields and like now you're studying English and other majors and yeah. now you have this license. What is your, what do you plan for the future? Like, do you want to still do this or are you going into English? Like, what's your plan? Right now I'm still at college okay. at Baruch and I feel like I'm going to really settle in a bit more because mm -hmm. I'm also in the swim team mm -hmm. at Baruch. I've been swimming since a very young age. Mm -hmm. So that's something to keep like me mentally sane, you know, with everything mm -hmm. and the stresses. But definitely I'm going to try to work part-time in the mm -hmm. industry, okay. hopefully JetBlue, and um, also manage school at the same time. And after I graduate with like my major in English, mm -hmm. I'm going to try to be a kindergarten teacher. Oh, wow. Yeah, I feel like since you teach little kids, it's mm -hmm. very important to like build up their developmental skills yeah, for sure. and psychology is going to help me with mm -hmm. that. Is there a moment that you ever questioned what you wanted to do or is this something that you always wanted to do? I think I'm still in the process of like yeah. my mind is like altering yeah. from different things like uh -huh. the possibilities, you know, you don't want to regret things in the future. So I feel like for me, it's definitely like take one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Like today I learned something that could possibly impact me for tomorrow. Yeah. So I'm still, I think right <laughs> now, my freshman year finishing it up, I think I'm going to be a kindergarten teacher, an elementary school teacher, yeah. you know? Start off with kids first. My name is Ali and I was inspired by the career because of my older brother. He's, he's currently an aircraft mechanic, he works for Delta. And growing up, I always, I always lived by airplanes and stuff like that. And I, I used to always see airplanes and I had uncles that were always into airplanes. So I was just always thinking about airplanes. It was something that was always in my head. 
and that was pretty much what I was inspired by. I always wanted to work on them. I always wondered how like a piece of metal could be in the air flying. So how did you get your position in JFK or what do you do there? Um, well, I'm currently a ramp agent at Swissport and basically what they are, they have aircraft maintenance. They basically they maintain the aircraft from the moment it comes off the ground to the moment it touches the ground. And did you always think about being in that position or is there somewhere you, you'd rather be? I mean, that? we always have to start somewhere and yeah. being a ramp agent is something that I have to do right mm -hmm. now, especially because it pays a lot of my bills. Even though I don't have a lot of bills, they let me work full time over there and it's something that I really, really love. So it's not really like going to work. It's like, it's like going fun, to have like fun. Experience. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like a family thing. So you said that you, in the Arab household, it, it influenced you in a way. In what way? In a good way? In a bad way? Um, growing up in the Arab household, it's, they're always, they always want you to do better than them. Like my parents, they always tell me, we came to this country because of you, you know? And I want to make them feel happy someday so they can look at me and make my father cry, the guy that never cries. I want to make him cry someday <laughs> and make him feel, wow, that's my yeah. son, look what he did. You know, make him happy someday. I want, I want to make my mother happy as well, you know? So how's your daily routine like? Basically, what well, my schedule is, I wake up in the morning, wake up, come to school, finish around 12, 15, go home, and I have 45 minutes to eat, get ready, pray, you know, do all the things that I have to do, and I have to go straight to the airport. And I have to leave early because currently, like, I don't have a car and stuff, so I have, like, a four hour from you going there and coming back. And then I start at 3.30, I finish at midnight, I get home two or three in the morning sometimes because the train, you know. So what keeps you motivated? You said it's hard and it's, it's really challenging to balance school and work. So what keeps you motivated to keep doing this every day? Seeing the people I grew up around mm -hmm. and all I see is them doing drugs and doing nothing basically. And it's kind of sad because it's like, I don't want to turn up like you. They're always talking about I'm getting money, but it's like mm -hmm. you're doing nothing with your life. And it's really sad and you know, Honestly, I don't want to end up like that. And that's, that's what motivates me to keep pushing every day and working hard mm -hmm. and not end up like other people that I see every day. So what inspires you to be in this field? What inspires me to be in this field? It has to be, has to be my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother is my biggest motivation, you know? And especially, like for example, even when I pass the test, I go straight to my mom, you know? Yeah. Look, this is what I did, mom, yeah. look, you know? <laughs> and it just, it always makes her happy. Even though it might not be serious, she's always, she's always, you know, how I say it. She's you. always gassing it, you know? Oh, she's okay. always increasing it. It's not even yeah. that serious. She's like, wow, that's good, you know, keep going, you know? Why do you feel like this license is really important? And why did you choose to do it at age 19? All right, well, I currently have one license. Mm -hmm. It's my airframe license. And basically what the airframe is, you basically can fix everything on the aircraft, except for the engine. That's basically what it is. So I can fix the landing gears, I can fix everything on the plane, but the engine, I can't really touch. So um, all the airlines, they want somebody that's fully qualified. They don't want somebody that's just partially qualified. They want somebody that's fully qualified. So to actually work in the airlines, they usually require both licenses. And that's why I'm currently doing ramp because I want to switch over to the department. This is a license, it's oh, a federal wow. license. It's nice. Congrats. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> And to get this, actually, I had to do these jobs. So I came down here. The test started around like six o'clock and it finished around my first class. Mm -hmm. So I had to come to the school at six in the morning, you know, and it finished around eight o'clock. But it was like three days. And oh, it was probably like eight hours, nine mm -hmm. hours. It was a really long test, you know. First you start with the verbal and stuff like that and then you start doing this. And basically one of my, one of my jobs was to remove and replace the battery. Mm -hmm. So I actually had to remove the component. I had to unscrew all of this. This is Naran Omar for Power Youth of Queens.